For a time, you know, Dakota people wore puckertail moccasins, and you can see them in um, photos of our ancestors. You can see that they're wearing puckertail moccasins from the 1860s. Even when Seth Eastman was painting the Dakota people that he was uh, immersed in, um, you can see a lot of times that they're wearing puckertail moccasins in those paintings. Up until the late 1910s, people were still wearing puckertail moccasins. <laughs> Uh, my name is Cole Redhorse Jacobson. I am um, from Prairie Island, Minnesota, and I am Mareo Kanto in Dakota. I am an artist. I work in many different media. I work with uh, specifically beadwork, quill work, many of our traditional art forms. For Dakota people, um, especially um, the Isanti bands of Dakota people, which are the the Mareo Kantua, the Wakpe Kute, the Wakpe Tua, and the Sisi Tua, which all resided in in and outside of Minnesota in our what we now call the state of Minnesota, in our in our traditional territory, um, a lot of the those lands are are wooded forest lands, and a lot of times the geographical area can dictate the footwear and the clothing of the people and we were neighbors with many different other nations, especially our, our neighbors to the north of us, the Hahatua, the Ojibwe, or the Anishinaabe as they call themselves, the, um, the Ho-Chunk, which are our relatives across the river um, in Wisconsin, the Potawatomi and the Sac and Fox to the south of us. And um, a lot of those tribes, though we were very different and we spoke different languages, we had very similar um, aesthetics and similar um, uh, material culture that we often drew upon with each other and often traded back and forth. And so I don't really know where pucker toe moccasins originated from, but they all have a concentration of this Minnesota upper Midwest area in the Great Lakes area. But when we were removed from Minnesota, a lot of times that's a different geographical area and therefore the aesthetics and the material culture can shift and the type of moccasins that they were wearing back then or during those times was um, the hard sole moccasins, which is what we kind of been accustomed to today, in which you see people wearing at um, powwow wachipi celebrations, as that's part of the contemporary traditional regalia. But you know, people don't understand that we were actually wearing pucker toe moccasins, which is a soft sole moccasin, which when you're in those heavily wooded areas, it allows you to walk through the forest quietly because they're soft soled. And so that's why I think um, pucker toe moccasins were significant. With the uh, pucker toe moccasins, um, they're soft sole, so they're all, it's all essentially one piece of leather. And um, you can see that there's no piece on the bottom here. This is just where my foot has been, and it's really worn out. But um, it's a soft sole moccasin, and um, all of the stitching is done on top of the, where the foot is. This is where the, the instep of the foot would be. And um, this piece right here is called a vamp. And this is where oftentimes the artists will will decorate the beadwork um, onto the vamp in floral designs or geometric designs or you know whatever. Amongst um, Ojibwe communities, they'll fully bead the vamp with um, a fully beaded background, or a lot of times they'll leave the background a, a blank a color so that it can kind of show off the beadwork here more, and that you can it kind of makes the beadwork pop. And a lot of times the choice material was velveteen or velvet. And then um, this is the, the moccasin itself is made out of the smoked hide. And um, there's this, uh, a stitch right here that um, goes from underneath the toe all the way to the instep. And then the stitching around here is where you do the puckering and that's where the pucker name comes from. And also in Dakota, the word for pucker toe moccasins is hayushki. And ha is a word for a footwear because it goes on your feet. And then yushki is to gather or to pucker. And that's what the stitching is right here is it's like a gathering of the, the buckskin as you're stitching them together. And then it's sort of finished off with a, a, a cuff. 
which is often decorated too. Um, sometimes it's, def it's left blank and sometimes it's different. And a lot of times, uh, depending on the tribe you come from, you can also tell by the way that they decorate the cuff. Um, there's a specific way that a lot of Dakota um, puckers or moccasins were made, where the cuff is uh, made a certain way. And sometimes, you know, like I said, Ojibwe people, they tend to fully bead the cuff as well and so that it's a fully beaded background. My favorite part about what I do and what I've been doing with um, revitalizing poker tail moccasins is that I've really seen the imprint it's left in Dakota communities that I've been to. Um, that's probably been my favorite part is seeing my role in it and seeing that it's, it's, it's worth something to have done what I did and that it, it, it really is bringing a lot of knowledge back to communities that may not have been um, decimated, but has always just been dormant. And so I'm, what I'm doing a lot of times is I'm almost reawakening these things in communities and in, in these in these conversations to have. And it, that's that's definitely been my favorite part. And um, you know, when I when I started and I was going to different communities and I was teaching workshops in Dakota communities, a lot of times people didn't really know about it, but they were eager to learn about it because they recognized it as well. And I had um, the the, art, the elder who even taught me about the word Hayushki. You know, she was an elder in in a Dakota community, and you know, she told me about that style of moccasin, and she told me what she knew about that moccasin, and she told me about you know what she knew her relatives about them wearing it, and it was you know such a really valuable um, experience for me to have and. Um, <clears throat> when I'm done and I leave these communities and then I see people from those communities later on, you know, posting, oh, I made these, this pair of pucker toe moccasins and oh, I made my, my grandma a pair, oh, I made my, my dad a pair, you know, that's like my favorite part and just really tells me that I'm really doing something right, you know, with this and that I'm not, you know, just uh, making up things and that, you know, I'm really reaching this community on a really deeper level.